This is the new Hunter 350 from Royal Enfield and in this video I'm going to give it a full review and tell you what this bike is like and is it any different to the Classic 350 and the Meteor. Please excuse my voice in this video, I've got a horrible cold and I've just come back from Amsterdam so I'm trying to use uh, whatever brain cells are active today to bring you this video. Um, so, the Hunter has got a 349cc single cylinder engine, the same one that you would have seen in the Meteor and the Classic 350. This is a lovely engine, it's very low powered so it's only producing 20.2 brake horsepower at 6100 RPM, uh, but this bike is not about power at all so you might as well not even know that figure and forget it exists because it's irrelevant uh, to this bike. Torque wise it produces 27 Nm at 4000 RPM and this does feel like it's got some nice torque so when you do try and overtake uh, maybe a slow moving cyclist or a little bit of traffic you can get past them with ease and it pulls up the hills nicely so um, I really like this engine and it sounds wonderful, um, a lovely deep tick over um, and it just sounds absolutely superb and it's got loads and loads of character so let me know what you think of this engine but I think it's gorgeous, really really nice. because it's so low powered this bike is very suited to beginner riders uh, perhaps a first bike this would be fantastic um, it's very confidence inspiring and it's not got enough power to go and end up in a hedge um, all the same that you could end up in a hedge on a 50cc do be careful um, but it, yeah it really is confidence inspiring so if you're looking for a first bike that's not too powerful has all the looks and isn't too expensive this is the best bike you could probably think of, um, or the classic, or the Meteor, depending on your style. Um, or if you're looking for a second bike, maybe for commuting, this would be great for that. It is marketed as a city bike, and it would be perfect for that, in and out of traffic. It's narrow, the bars are quite narrow, um, so you'd smooth in and out of traffic very nicely. Um, but if you're looking for something to do a bit more spirited riding on, um, then you probably want to look at the Interceptor, or the Continental GT, which we absolutely love. Um, but this is a great little machine. I really love it. So in terms of handling, this bike is very nimble. Um, many of that thanks to a couple of changes they've made. Um, so comparing it to the classic, you've got on this one, 17 inch wheels on the front and the rear, whereas the Classic had a 19 inch on the front and an 18 on the rear. Um, so that boosts maneuverability. Um, and also, they've moved the position of the pegs. So on the Classic, the pegs were about here. So the brake lever was coming out to about here. So on this one, they've moved it back, uh, probably about six inches or maybe even further. Um, personally, I prefer the riding position of the Classic uh, but that is very much personal preference um, and probably for city riding this is more suited to that. Um, so not really a complaint, just a personal preference thing. The wheels on the Hunter are alloys and you'll be pleased to know they've got tubeless tyres which many of you will be happy about. Um, I just love the look of spoked wheels, so I love those spoked wheels on the Classic. Um, but these are really nice too and you've got a single disc brake on the front and the rear. The stopping power is really, really good, so I wouldn't change anything there either.
styling wise, this bike looks very familiar, um, but not of something from Royal Enfield. Um, let me know what you think this bike looks like, um, but I think it looks like a bit of a Bonneville. It looks like a baby Bonneville. Um, and that's interesting because uh, I don't know if you've seen the leaks, but Triumph are supposedly making a baby Bonneville. So it'll be interesting to see how that compares to this because this is such a value for money bike, whereas I don't think Triumph are gonna be able to make something um, as good value for money as this is. Um, Royal Enfield just have that down to a T. Value for money is what they do and they deliver every single time. Um, and it baffles me. I don't know how they do it, but they do it. So the Hunter 350 starts from £3,899 in the UK, and that's in the Dapper collection of colours and then you've got the rebel colours so this is a rebel blue and these are starting from 3979 so all in all it's a brilliant value for money bike um, cheaper than some 125s out there I mean from Honda and things like that they're more expensive than this and I know I'd rather have this um, so let me know what you think of this bike and the um, price point but I'm, I'm always impressed by the price points of Royal Enfields they're just so good value for money. Suspension setup on the Hunter, it's just a standard telescopic forks on the front and you've got a six adjustable preload on the shocks on the rear. I can't fault it, it goes over the bumps nicely, um, so no issues there. Um, and this bike is really, really light, so it weighs just over 180 kilograms um, and it feels incredibly light. I've just had to move it out of the way uh, for someone to come past and it's so effortless. Um, if I was doing this on my bike, I'd probably be in the ditch by now. Um, so yeah, really, really light and nimble. The fuel tank is 13 litres and Triumph claim this bike will do just over 100 miles per gallon um, and that's pretty impressive and in this day and age and this time where fuel prices are ridiculously high and we're in a bit of a cost of living crisis to say the least, um, bikes like these are becoming more and more appealing. They're cheap to buy, they're cheap to run, they're cheap to insure um, so if you want a cheap runaround this is your answer. Um, yeah. What more can I say? So in terms of display and dials and things like that, this bike is very basic and that's what we like. If you've been watching the channel, you'll know that we're a fan of analog and not too much faff going on that doesn't need to be. And this is exactly that. So you've got a small digital display in the middle, which tells you the very basics, um, how much fuel you've got, um, how many miles you've done. You've got a tripometer um, and things like that. You've got, um, the time and what gear you're in and this bike has got five gears really nice smooth gearbox I forgot to mention that but no complaints there either you've also got your miles per hour and your kilometers per hour as an analog dial around the edge uh, which I like the look of uh, one thing this bike's missing which would be really nice is that little uh, navigation thing I forgot what they call it um, but for a city bike I think that would come in nice and handy but um, due to shortages of chips and things like that. This is something that's affecting the bikes, uh, manufacturers around the world and car manufacturers, um, they can't do it. So later on, it will be available um, and you can then upgrade and put that on your bike, but as standard, it doesn't come with it, unfortunately.
following on from my previous point, uh, I forgot to mention that it doesn't show you the RPMs either. Um, so that'd be nice to know, but it's up to you whether that's an important thing for you or not. Probably not around the city, to be honest. Uh, the seat height is 790 millimeters. I am six foot one, thereabouts. And this is what I look like sat on the bike. So it does feel a little bit small for me, I must admit, but it doesn't feel uncomfortable at all. It feels very comfortable actually, and it puts you back in a nice position. Um, you're nice and upright. So feeling wise, it feels fine, but I might just look a bit small on it. So you let me know in the comments below what I look like sat on top of it. But really it's probably, as with most bikes these days, set up for someone who's about five foot nine, five foot 10, the average height, even though that's going up now. So maybe we'll start seeing bigger bikes as people turn into giants, who knows. Um, but yeah, that's that. Ugh. Oh, and also this side stand is very upright. So the angle in which it's at, the bike's literally stood directly upright. So if you're on a slight slope, I'd watch out that it doesn't tip over. So make sure you make sure it's definitely in whenever you stop the bike. You've also got a center stand, which I haven't tried. Um, and I'm bloody hopeless at center stand, so let's have a go. I'm not even going to try that. The mirrors are adequate. You can see about half the road behind me. Um, bar end mirrors would be better for sight, but then they'd be too wide for lane splitting, which this bike is perfect for. So I wouldn't move them. You've got a rear seat, a step up seat, which looks really nice, nice and comfortable, very nice and padded it's on the back as well. Um, and you've got those rear pegs there as well. So you can take a pillion. I think this bike perhaps would be a little bit sluggish up the hills, like steep hills where I live. Um, some people think hills are like tiny little things, but we've got proper hills around here. Um, so if you had someone on the back, it might struggle a bit going up those hills. Um, but I haven't actually tested that. So that's just an assumption. Um, so don't take that as literal speaking. And if you've taken someone on the back of one of these or um, a classic or a meteor, let me know and tell me how it handle it. Um, but yeah, it'd be interesting to know. If you haven't heard we're now offering channel membership um, what this is essentially is you've got different brackets of membership the first one um, you get some emblems and different stickers and things that you can use in the comments section um, the intermediate membership um, you get early access to our videos so watching this video now you would have been able to see it already um, before everybody else um, so if you're interested in that please um, sign up, but there's no obligation. The best thing you can do, which is free, is subscribe. So if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed, please do, we've reviewed loads of different bikes and there's gonna be plenty, plenty more on the channel, so you don't wanna miss out. Ah, thanks very much for watching. I think I've covered everything I wanted to, uh, but I can't think straight today. Um, it's all that strange coffee in Amsterdam, I don't know what it is. Um, I think it's really coffee, I don't know about you, but um, strange. But anyway, I'm off to bed and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Make sure you like and subscribe, uh, leave your comments what you think of this bike and there'll be plenty more to come. Old man's obviously uh, just had his surgery, so if you don't know about his accident, you can see his video on the channel, um, but hopefully he'll be riding soon enough. Um, so leave your comments down below wishing him well. I don't know, most of you have already. Um, but hopefully he'll be on the mend. Uh, lots of physio to come, but fingers crossed, he'll be on the bike as soon as possible.